Hello, welcome to this new Gespi's Atari stuff video. I have a lot of fun uh, with the new Atari 2600 Plus playing my old 2600 cartridges. But it is also still fun to play games on original Atari hardware. The only thing is that the Atari 2600 has an RF output intended for all television sets. And my television cannot show the image of this connection properly. So it's time for a composite video modification. To get composite video from the Atari 2600, you can buy ready-made modification boards. But such a mod is quite simple, you can easily make it yourself. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We start by looking at the electronic diagram of the Atari 2600. Here we see the TIA chip. This chip generates the video signal. Here we see the Luma sync and color signals. These go to this circuit, which combines them in one composite video signal. And that goes via this connector to the RF modulator on the other board. And here we have the audio signal. This goes via this transistor and gets combined with the video signal to the RF modulator. But we want to have the audio signal separate. That is why we have to remove these parts, so the audio signal does not go into the video signal and we can pick it up somewhere around here. We cannot send the video signal directly to the monitor, it has to be amplified a bit. For that we built this circuit, that gets powered with the 5 volts from the Atari itself. And then we feed the video signal in here, that goes uh, through the transistor and then to the video out for the monitor. I'm going to build this uh, entire circuit on a uh, prototyping board. And here we see the result. Here goes the plus 5 volts. And this is the video in. That comes out via this connector. Here I made an uh, audio out that is uh, directly connected to this uh, audio in. There is uh, nothing in between. Here we have the transistor that uh, amplifies the signal. So we have to build this in the Atari 2600. And here we have my 6-switch uh, Woody Atari 2600. To open it we have to remove a number of screws. And that is uh, this one, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. We can now carefully lift the top. We see that I already made a uh, modification in the past. This is a power LED which is located at the front uh, at the bottom. I'm glad I didn't made it in the switch panel, uh, luckily that is still intact. I also placed some pieces of cotton here uh, because the original pieces of foam had completely dissolved. We are now going to remove the switchboard. To do this, two screws have to be removed. Now the RF cable can be uh, disconnected. If we uh, disconnect this cable uh, between the two boards, we can remove the switchboard. And we uh, no longer need this uh, RF cable, so uh, we can remove it completely. The CPU board is still attached with uh, two screws at the bottom.
The board with this enormous shielding can now be removed. But we still have to remove the shielding from the board. We do this by unscrewing these uh, six screws. Now the bottom plate is off, but uh, we also have to remove uh, these screws to get the board out. And here we have the processor board. We start by removing the components of the audio circuit. These are uh, this coil, this transistor, this resistor and that resistor. That was the last one. Now that all the components have been removed, we can connect the audio signal. For this I made uh, this cable. I chose to also connect the ground, so that I can use this to shield the audio signal. By removing R209, we can pick up the audio signal here. I also found a place where I can connect the ground. After the audio signal, we are going to connect the video signal. We get this signal from the switchboard. The signal goes via the coil to the RF modulator. By removing this coil, we can pick up the video signal here. Now we can also leave the RF modulator in place. I want to leave the 2600 intact as much as possible. I made this cable for the video signal. Here too I have a wire for the signal and the shielding for the ground. Then we are going to connect the plus 5 volts. Here I found a location on the switchboard where there are already two islands.
Now that the wires are connected to the 2600, we can connect them to the PCB board. We start with the plus 5 volts. Next comes the video signal. And then we connect the audio signal. To connect the signal to the monitor, I chose not to make uh, holes in the case for connectors, but I made this fixed cable. There is a tulip connector for the video, and the audio signal goes to uh, connectors for right and left. So, this is now also connected, which means that we can start testing. Ok, everything is connected. The video and audio out is going to this monitor. And the power adapter is connected. Now we're going to see if the modification works. Yes, we have a picture! But do we also have sound? I'll start the game. Yes, the sound works too. Now all this has to be built back in the case. I lead the audio out cable under the cartridge. So if you place the board back in the shielding, then the cable just fits through this opening. I have placed on the bottom of the PCB board uh, some double sided tape, that the board fits exactly in this open space. The new video cable I can uh, nicely feed through the opening where the RF cable used to be. That way I don't have to drill any hole in the case of the 2600. Here are all the components that has been removed. I have to keep them safe, so uh, it's always possible to reverse the modification. That's why I keep this uh, here inside the 2600 case itself. Like this, with a piece of tape. Now they can't get lost. Now the top of the case can be placed back. So, everything is back together. Now just one last test. Yes, it still works. I uh, shall play a bit of pole position. I see now that I still have to center the image, but that will come later. With this uh, composite video modification, I can use my original Atari 2600 again. And that's nice, because since I also have a 2600 Plus, I buy game cartridges every now and then. And of course, you also want to play them on original hardware. And with that, we come to the end of this video. Since you've watched uh, until the end of the video, it seems you like the content. It would be nice if you also give uh, this video a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, also click on subscribe. The channel is greatly supported by this. Thanks in advance. And I hope to see you at the next Gespi Atari Stuff video. Bye!